What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. Wow. All right, what's well, going on, chat? Another collegiate Overwatch match coming your way on the NECC. I'm Yell Kreb, joined by Unicorn. For this one, we've got Montclair State University going up against Hawking College. It's a battle of the Hawks, if you're familiar with the mascots. Unicorn, this is going to be an emergence division game. You just got done casting another one. What can you tell us about the level of competition compared to the Champlain-Carroll game that we're going to see in this one? 
I think if it's anything mirrored as to what we saw previously, we're rolling with a lot of comfort picks here. I think Brawl's the name of the game when it comes to what these teams are comfortable with, and it comes down to who can hold high ground better whenever they choose to head up there on a whim. Once they get up there, who can take them down? We talked about, at least Infernosis and I did, about whether it's a double bubble, you know, commit a diva to it, but so much of these emergence teams rely, or so many on these emergence teams just rely on that Zarya and Ryan with a Lucio speed boost and so there's not a ton of options to contest high ground if we can find one of those teams to kind of break out of that mold break out of that tradition that is that standard brawl i think we'll see a lot of success here i think you're right and it's a kind of weird place that the meta's in right now where a lot of very high ranked teams are running a reinhardt which has not been done for yeah. so long and they're running it with a diva and a speed boost just so they can run things down and then it's all about just how quick you can retreat and how well you can do it as a team but in these lower divisions, that can get a little bit wily. Usually if the Ryan's going in deep, he's staying in there and he's just going to go ham and try and get as many picks as he can. And personally, that's what I love about Reinhardt. He's my favorite hero in the game for that exact reason because when you are just in the zone, you are so in the thick of it with that Brawl hero. So I'm hoping we see it today, but the map pool unicorn is not very Ryan favored. Definitely not. I mean, we start on Nepal where, you know, if you if you start off on Sanctum, pretty difficult for a Reinhardt to really get things going there, especially if you can commit an Orisa, even a Sigma there to really keep that Reinhardt at bay. Now, once it opens up to Village, if you can take a team from holding high ground and keep the brawl centric to the point or centered on the point, excuse me, then a Reinhardt can really pop off on Shrine. The door is open for everything, right? You can run the D.Va. You can run a ball, try and spin to win. The uh, the Zarya works just as well. And then, as you kind of mentioned, we see a lot of Ryan D.Va, but we've also, at least at the higher tiers, like you mentioned, seen a lot of Ryan Orisa. And I think Shrine's yeah. a good map for Ryan Orisa. I think it definitely can work. The uh, German horsepower, I think it was, that you That's called the it. the one. The yeah. halt fire strike combo is alive and well. I think a lot of teams are transitioning to that. I've seen it in my comp games recently maybe some of these emergence teams have kind of picked up on that on the side maybe haven't seen a lot of it in scrims and they're keeping it on the dl yeah that rhino orisa is quite the comp because you get the you get the supercharger the amplification from the orisa and usually it's run with a baptiste you can combo that fire strike with a halt through the window it just has a massive playmaking potential when those ultimates start coming online but getting into dorado here to kick things off really it could be anything. I mean, this is a map that... Oh, not Dorado, that's right. Okay, okay. Caleb, behind the buttons over there, not putting this on Nepal, <laughs> faking me out, making me think. Nepal, like you said, Sanctum is the map that doesn't really favor the Reinhardt, and then the other two, Village and Shrine. You can run the Rhine on there. I like the spin to win strat that you mentioned. We're gonna wind up on Shrine first, so it's gonna be very interesting to see what the teams are going to play on the point that most anything can find value on. Definitely. And I, what I like to see here on Shrine, at least from these lower level teams in Emergence, it, I don't think it works at the highest tier, but if you can run a Sim here, put it immediately on that roof or on that platform right out of spawn, you can run a ball with it, then the contest just never ends, right? Because your team is so quick to get back to point. Wrecking Ball can continue to stall out for as long as possible, and those fights really never end as long as you can get the team back in time. But instead, we're going to see very, very different team, very different team comps here from both sides. You're going to see Grapasaurus and J. Joshi on the uh, on the Ryan Sigma, Jinx meme and Robot Wizard on the Ryan Zarya here. Snorty on a Fara, Boss Face on a Hanzo, Hisoka on a Reaper. The comps are everywhere. I haven't even touched the support line, but they're different as well, yo. Yeah, they really are. In We've seen this from Hawking College before that they like to run things that are a little bit out of the norm. They like to run that far just so they make the other DPS have to look up. I mean, if you're looking up, you're not looking at the front line. You're probably missing stuff that's within your line of sight. So that far can provide a lot of value. Snorty already doing a decent job at charging that ultimate up. But right now, the Brawl, just very stationary from Montclair College. They're using to just get their resources in order before they push in. But it seems like Hawking College is going to press the advantage as their Ryan begins to move up. Snorty up from the skies, finds a 2k on the two. DPS of Montclair. And that is going to wrap up the first fight really quickly. It's just the stagger kills from here, Unicorn. 
Snorty is making the kill feed his own here as he's popping off this on this Farah, assisted by Jake. Just I think ends up finding four, maybe five in that exchange here. He's got a barrage ready. Jinx meme finally enters the kill feed. Someone else here for the side of Hawking College gets a taste of blood. However, you see Montclair just kind of right here at the spawn door trying to double back. They were able to get Wishmaker right there on that rally. That's going to be crucial to push up in this next fight. However, they've got to find a way to deal with this barrage. I, I'm not sure if they're expecting it online quite this quickly. I would imagine that they're not, and they've got the nano boost from Humble to Boot. That could be an unstoppable combo coming in at already just 40% captured for Hawk and College. There's a lot of life left in this game, but they could just increase their percentage so much by ending them with an all combo right here. And Snorty is going for it. He's already closed in on the Ash. No hits get left. Barrage oh, let loose. That's no. five, six go down. Great Basaurus falling last. And Snorty letting us know what it's like up in the skies. Snorty doesn't even need the nano that you mentioned from Humble. The nano boost stays there. Cyan and Wishmaker also keep their ults. However, Snorty is just ruining this kill feed here all on his own. He's ready to go on the far again. And I think if you look at Montclair College right now, it looks a little slow. It looks stagnant. I'm not sure if they have a clear idea on how to get in here. The rally gets canceled. Humble chucks a grenade in and it absolutely finds what it's looking for. Three members go down on a flash while anti and Snorty is rolling deep. Finds two. Cyan and Boss Face both falling at the end of that fight. 86% Unicorn were already in final fight territory here. The final fight territory indeed. And if you look for the side of Montclair, they have nothing but a nano to try and get in here. They've got to assume that Grape, Grape Asaurus and Jitter can stay alive for their respective ultimates. But I'm not sure if anyone's going to be able to touch here as the pin comes in. But the counter pin and the grab was there to stop it. And just as quickly as it began, Yelk, 100 to 0 there for the side of Hawking College takes down Montclair. And uh, I'll tell you what, if I'm being honest with you, Snorty might have been able to do that on his own. Snorty might have been the only player who had fun that round. Yeah. I think he was the only player with any <laughs> significant impact. I didn't see many other players in the kill feed at all. I mean, it wasn't just his ultimate fight. It was before the very first fight of that round. Yeah. It was all him in the kill feed. I don't know if anyone on Montclair is looking up. They've got the double hit scan. I think Snorty was doing a fantastic job playing those close angles. So where if those hit scan wanted to even peek at him, they had to be standing in no man's land. And if they're not behind a shield, Snorty's going to make quick work of them. But now he's on the junk rat. He's definitely proven that he can make quick work of the opposing DPS on that far, but you're absolutely right. We'll have to see if he can do the same thing on the Junkrat. As we move into Sanctum, a, a little bit of a bad map here for Reinhardt, as we mentioned, but we see Robot Wizard on it nonetheless. Grapasaurus and Joshi for Montclair on the standard Orisa Sigma here. They're going to want to poke. They don't mind giving the point to Hawking College uh, early here, but instead, Grapasaurus goes to touch, and he might get brawled into here. I'm not sure I like the play, but instead, Hawking College chooses to back off. This is dangerous ground for Grapasaurus to stand on. Now the Brawl is pressing into him, and oh my god, he is deleted. deleted. I mean, that is overstepping your bounds. He felt safe for so long right there, but so quickly, Hawking College revealed how dangerous that positioning was. And in the composition like the one Montclair is running, I want to see the Orisa stay as that anchor of the team and allow the DPS to find the picks and boss face does just that as he finds three with the dragons, cleans up Robot Wizard on the Reinhardt and Montclair are moving in now off of those picks. That was a beautiful little dragon strike we saw there from boss face. He cornered them into that small hallway that is right on the point. I mean, you don't have many options to hide in if you're choosing to set up a brawl comp on point and boss face able to charge up that ultimate and take away that entire zone. He does so perfectly well too, even without Grapasaurus there on the Orisa. And now it's good news for them. You're gonna see Hawking College most likely rotate right and go uh, to the Mega Room to drop down just to try and avoid this double shield. However, what I wanna see from them is just to have the Reinhardt toe touch, but instead they wanna take it right to Montclair, but there goes the Reinhardt. Wait a minute. Oh no, hold. Grapasaurus making a high value play before dropping that supercharger. It looks like Jujashi is caught on the edge and he eventually oh. does fall his soak again gets the headshot kill, but he was going down to gravity anyway. The high noon from Jitter gets popped and it's able to find Snorty, a very crucial player for this Hawking side removed. The Graviton Surge having to come out the Resurrect, looking like it's going to come through on the Grapasaurus. Still Montclair, not out of this one yet. They've still got some life, but they've got to find kills quick. Hisoka's glowing red there on the Reaper, forced to Wraith back 90% to the Death Blossom, trying to get out. However, 
Montclair hold the point, 55% down there. They're quite ahead of Hawking College at this point, and no one from Hawking touched the point on that last one. All started on the back of Grapasaurus as he removed the steadfast buff completely from Robot Wizard, got him off the map nonetheless. They're gonna wanna brawl into it again here. Coalescence is immediately popped, the shield's going down, but here comes the tire from Snorty. Oh my God, it's gonna be massive. Please take out the ammo. They gotta get the ammo. Just blow it up and find four. What a play from Snorty. What restraint to find the quad <laughs> kill. Maybe celebrates by jumping off the map. Maybe gets the wrong footing, trips over a rock here. Sanctum looking a little old and decrepit. Maybe there's loose pebbles in the ground that we don't know of. But Snorty finds his way into the pit here. Not gonna be here for the side of uh, Hawking College as they move forward and try and hold right here at the door with this brawl. They've got the Blossom to work with, but they've got to get rid of this ammo first as dragons come out. The tanks have been split. That Blossom has to come in quick. Robot Wizard already goes down, and this Montclair team is steamrolling through. Snorty able to find a kill with the Concussion Mine. They're playing close on the uh -oh. corner here. The High Noon shut down from Jinx Meme, and the sleep goes on to Jay Joshi. Now in a tough spot is Montclair. Not sure if they can weasel their way out of this one and get safe in the Mega Health Pack room. Hawking taking away all the space in front of them. Hawking able to turn that around. As you mentioned, they got staggered, or excuse me, not staggered, a little split there is one moved left, the rest moved right. However, they regroup, try and retake, and go for the contest after a fat anti-nade from the side of Humboldt. They're able to clean it up there. What I want to see from the side of Grapasaurus and friends from Montclair is to move in slowly here. You still have 15%. Try and get this left side. Really rely on your DPS to get these picks. Throw the supercharger in if you can and really try and rush forward here, especially now that you have Snorty down. Oh no. Big Blossom and the double anti-nade lands. This is last fight territory and the first map here on Nepal going to go the way of Hawking College. But a little contest maybe from the Mercy Valking doesn't quite make it in oh, time. No. Hawking wraps it up with a 2-0 to start out on Nepal. However, I'll tell you, Montclair had a lot more life in them on Sanctum than they did on Shrine. Shrine definitely didn't look comfortable, but who did look comfortable? It's Snorty with this play of the game here on the Farah. Look at him just get the eagle eye over the rest of the Montclair team and absolutely destroy. Yeah, just raining in damage from point blank range. And he had two candidates. Don't forget about that rip tire that he just True. Drove around and around yeah. and around, waiting for the immortality field to go down. I mean, it was almost like an awkward riptide because it was lingering for <laughs> so long, but the shatter landed and everyone was stunned. He just couldn't pass it up. And I love the DPS play I'm seeing so far. I think Montclair, if they're looking for answers, it has to be shutting down Snorty. Yeah, it's how do we get rid of Snorty as well as Humboldt on this Ana. I mean, the Nanos are always there to sustain someone, and the Antis have been massive already in two very quick rounds. We'll move on to Numbani. I think we see some more Farah from Snorty. I think Numbani is a great map for Farah. All the natural structures and the corners you can get behind, whether you're attacking and defending. And this player has definitely proved formidable on that bird in the sky. But can Montclair find some proficiency with the hit scan to deal with them like you mentioned? Maybe commit a D.Va to it, get off this Sigma potentially? What do you think the answer is? I think the D the D.Va is probably the answer. Um, okay. Just adding something from the off tank slot. If the hit scan are having trouble, you can matrix them while they're in that terrible angle they have to take to get a look at the far in the first place. Or you can just use those rocket boosters and just do the engagement yourself onto the far. If Snorty's giving you that much trouble on the bird, you got to commit more than just two hits again. You got to just go full force, hard counter him, and make him swap to something else. And we can't mention enough, it's not just Snorty in the air. Jake definitely providing all of that sustain with that mercy. Humboldt hitting the shots, as I saw, at least briefly first person, able to really nail Snorty in the air with those uh, with those shots from the Ana. He's got all the support in the world. It's definitely going to take more than just a D.Va, in my opinion. I think these hit scans are really going to have to come to life. But honestly, if we remove the hit scans from the equation, I'd like to see Jitter or Bossface potentially hop on the Echo here get a mercy pocket of their own and try and push forward onto snorty echo could definitely work i liked what boss face was doing on the hanzo mm -hmm. uh, just because he was able to use that storm arrow get cooldowns out and actually find a few picks charge his ultimate very quick so maybe the swap comes from jitter because i think hanzo might be a good look for this team if they're looking to run two shields or something like that and pressure out hawking hanzo does a great job of providing that poke damage and that spam 
I think he definitely does, especially if you want to go the more standard brawl route and just ignore the far in the sky, take it straight to the ground and the rest of the front line while that far is in the air trying to get those picks. However, at least in my opinion, it takes a lot more of an organized brawl to do that in a very quick one where you have to get in these tight spaces, avoid the line of sight of the Farah, and take advantage of the burst you have on the front line. However, we'll have to see what they go with as once again, Montclair choose to defend here on Numbani. Choosing to defend, I think it's pretty smart. I mean, Definitely. you're not the yeah. team that's going out and trying to surprise the defenders. I don't think this is going to be a team that throws some crazy strategies out there. I think they're going to stick mainly to a, a brawl type comp. I don't think they wanted to be on the double shield. I think last time there was just so much spam put onto them that they had to switch on to that comp. I think, like you said in the pregame, if they're going off of comfort picks, this is what they're going to look like for Montclair. Yeah, I think this is what we're seeing so far, and I think they've shown their true colors already. This is comfort picks for them. Boss face is back on the Hanzo. Now, Jitter on the Ash without the Mercy Pocket. That's what concerns me. It's the first thing I'm looking at. Uh, Vishmaker on the Brigida. I, I love Brigida. I think she's always a fantastic pick. She's broken, not in a good spot. I'll say it over and over again. But if I'm running Jitter on an Ash, I've got to have a Mercy with it. I don't, once again, just my opinion, a humble opinion. I think Ash is in a terrible spot right now without a Mercy Pocket. Yeah, she really is. And even with the pocket, she can't one hit that squishy target anymore. She just does a sliver too little damage, but it's looking like the first rotation from the attacking team Hawking is going to be right down Broadway going low ground. Not very concerned about these high ground threats and already Hisoka going up to teleport right on top of Jitter and bursting him down. No, he's not. Jitter lands the headshot on the Snorty. He's the victorious DPS. And now he's caught in a duel way in his own backline, rotating around even farther around the point. But Hisoka does eventually catch up to him and take him down with those shotguns. But still, it's anyone's point that takes here. The tanks here looking to stabilize, but caught in the blue room is Hawking College with their mercy. They're looking to burst out, but with that anti-nade, they've got to keep their tanks up. You know, we talk about the DPS here, but it's been the honor show for these last for this last map, and it seems like it's the same here moving forward. Cyan found two huge antis throughout that fight. However, it's not enough. And Hawking College take it with 250 left on the clock. They move it in here. Their first attack. Snorty cleans up, assisted by Hisoka on that Reaper by getting up there. Jitter was able to take out Snorty, however wasn't enough there to keep the defensive hold. They'll move into streets phase with over five minutes on the clock and you can already see them moving forward and trying to take space away from the defense. And I think they're going to succeed too. They've got the ultimates to do it. Snorty doesn't have that barrage just yet, but they've got so many other big playmakers in the bank like Robot Wizard just looking to line up this Earth Shatter. He's getting a little cocky with his positioning. He could get caught out right here, but it doesn't seem like the Ultimate's going to come out just for that kill onto him from Montclair. The car moving around this bus, and now Snorty has that barrage. They've really done a great job of farming these Ultimates. Snorty coming in over the top, finds a 2K before he's taken down by a headshot. Not able, or not sure rather, how he's able to find that kill while also getting a headshot. <laughs> Projectiles must have just been going that perfect speed. Definitely seems like it. Snorty cleans up the back line as it looks like the nano boost was committed to Grapasaurus inside of that grab. He did end up finding Robot Wizard, who's on the run back here as the cart moves in past Street's face. He'll get long spawn, but he'll be back in just a moment. However, Snorty cleaning up that back line really disabled Grapasaurus from being able to get the sustain and the, uh, the ability to move forward after that grab ended. He ends up falling and I feel like we're just watching the Snorty show at this point, Yelk. I think we are. Dragon Strike coming out, going oh, to cut off everybody. Dragons. Robot Wizard was looking for a knockout on an awfully low grape of source, but he ends up caught in that Dragon Strike and going down. The Resurrect may go oh. through. Barrage gets rocked out instantly, and the anti nade from Cyan follows up, but it's the kills from Hawking that are coming through. It definitely is. Yelk has some wind blowing up there on the mountain. Uh, let me know when that lag dies down just a little bit. It looks like you see Hawking College moving in. I'm not sure if anyone can touch. Grapasaurus is there, met with the Immortality Field. The ammo falls quickly, but Grapasaurus has the Bionate, forces out the Immortality Field from Hawking, but the Amplification Matrix is there as well as the Death Blossom and a Graviton Surge. All to galore here for Hawking College as nothing can stop them from pushing it in here on Numbani. A 
four minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock as they move to defense and we check on yoke oh i'm here i'm oh, here nothing go. like a little gust of wind you know nothing like gust of wind on the mountain really blows yeah. the crops around it wouldn't be a cast if i didn't get knocked out of the game for five seconds because of the weather but i see but that we're back. hawking college was was able to cap with four and a half minutes that's pretty incredible uh i don't even think that by the time i was gone there was any chance of the payload reaching the finish line they weren't even around the corner yet but in the brief time that i was gone they managed to get it all the way so that is pretty crazy yeah, pretty significant that they took the last fight without any ultimates, and then you just saw all the ults come out just to ensure no one from the side of Montclair touched, and to no avail, they sure didn't. Uh, as we move forward here on defense, you're going to see them go with a pretty sim. in fact, the same exact comp, not a similar comp, the same exact comp, because if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix, if, if it ain't, they do the same thing, Yoke. Yes, if it ain't broke, do. hold on. <laughs> What is it? Am I stupid? If it ain't broke, broke don't, don't fix, fix it. it. Yeah, okay. I thought yeah. it, it's the, I was, I was trying to make it more complicated. Don't laugh at me. Kid. No, you just, just have a hear, very educated me. tongue and you know that that sentence makes no exactly. sense. Exactly. That, see, that's what it is. Thank you. Yeah. Snorty yeah. on the Fara attacking. They do go <laughs> with the echo and the mercy here as we take the, uh, the subject matter off of my idiocy and we go to the Overwatch since it's a video game that we cast. Jitter on the Echo, Cyan on the Mercy. I want to see them try and take it to Snorty. You immediately see that duel get, uh, go off here. Boss face is also on the Ash, so they take Jitter off the Ash. That's got to be another comfort pick here. Maybe Jitter just more comfortable on that Echo. But what I want to see is as soon as Snorty uses those jump jets, gets in the air just like that, I want to see Jitter immediately get in his face and take the fight right to them because that Fara, while it may not seem like it is oh. super mobile in the air as proven right there rez is gonna have to come out from jake does get it off or i'm sorry no it gets canceled that's a massive cancel and they're able to roll in on it too jitter taken down robot wizard with those sticky grenades and boss face tnt away jake just humble able to cling to his life for quite some time but eventually does fall to jitter as well who's been on a tear ever since he took out of that far from the skies snorty i wasn't expecting him to go down like that but you were right once those jump jets got used jitter just closed in on him and deleted him with that focusing beam and that that needs to be what happens every single fight from now on as soon as snorty uses those jump jets even right now just get in snorty's face rely on you know an emergence division player not being able to hit those direct hits snorty popping off showing that he definitely can hit those directs but it's what you have to do with a far that's this proficient you have to take the fight right to him instead he'll just take out the front line instead the copy went on to the reaper which was looking awfully dangerous but it's put a stop to rather quickly snorty's back up in the skies with not too much to worry about there is a pocket ash on the ground but he's not poking his face around the corner too much before mixing it up with boss face taking the angle he was looking oh for and then God. dropping the barrage from behind to take down the tanks the awareness from Snorty there takes out boss face on that hit scan immediately flips a 180 throws the barrage finds two jump jets in the air and finds the fourth absolutely carries the team fight on his own there after it was looking good for Jitter and friends on Montclair when he found that duplicate Snorty continues to show off here on this bird and even with the hit scan and Jitter on the echo it doesn't seem like it's quite enough of an answer for him you're absolutely right. And what Snorty's doing too with his ultimates is he's saving his team from having to use ultimates as well. He's getting so much value with there his barrages go. as he goes down to the focusing beam there after using the jump jets. Everyone's locked up in the grab. Oh, his no. Soka comes through with the blossom and it seems like he's killed enough members of Montclair. They've just got the echo and the mercy left and Jitter finally falls to his Soka as well. And this man with the shotguns is pulling an awful lot of weight, showing us it's not just Snorty out there. Not just Snorty. Snorty falls immediately to Jitter, and in the time frame that it took Jake to get the res off on Snorty, Hisoka finds four, accompanied by the grab from Jinx meme, and Hawking just seems to have everything paired together seamlessly for the defense. If one avenue of damage falls, they immediately dedicate the ultimates that you mentioned they didn't have to use while Snorty was alive. They recognize when it's time, throw it immediately, and I think we're going to see a ton of that going forward here as they continue to hold the front of this bus, and they huge oh. chatter from robot wizard and that's going to clean up the fight already it lands on the five members of montclair and they all go down almost immediately snorty's up top and when everyone's lying on their backs and you're the far from the skies it's pretty easy to hit those targets with directs it definitely is robot wizard 
the only person to thank for that fight, walks forward with the bubble, goes around the corner of the front of that bus and hits the fattest shatter I've ever seen. And what we see here as far as ults are concer concerned, Snorty's back ready with the barrage. It's online, Hisoka's building it up. They've got the Nano to sustain either a Reinhardt or Snorty on this far during that ultimate. And Montclair has to toss everything just to get past this initial streets portion. They absolutely do. It's going to be up to... Oh, the slam gets blocked as the barrage comes through over top. It's enough to take down Grapasaurus, but Snorty does pay with his life for that one. Resurrected back by Jake Just. The Flux comes through, removing the Mercy, but the Sleep Dart sleep. lands on the Jay Joshi. What a stun to cancel that. Bound to be massive for Vitic Flux. And Jitter follows up with an Echo copy that finds a pair as the slam lands and takes down Humble. The sleep was huge, but it's not quite enough to turn the fight as Jinx Meme falls with a hundred charge right there. Jitter's ready with the focusing beam to take out anyone who wants to touch here, but instead you'll see Hawking know when it's over. They'll back off, get ready to defend point three here, as this is where it's going to be the most decimating for them. I don't know how, with at least the way Snorty's playing so far, how they get this far a player off of this high ground around this corner. And that building goes all the way up to provide cover for that far player as well. The Echo can do what she can to challenge, but when this Brawl is rushing you down as well, there's just so much pressure to keep up with where you don't have a window of time long enough to take down Snorty. They've done a great job of it so far in this game, but three minutes remain. They're already down in the time bank war against Hawking, and Hawking picking up this fight as well, making that time bank even smaller. And I think this is what we're going to see over and over again, Yelk. The side of Hawking is just going to be able to hold this corner here. And even though the res is here and Jitter's back up, Shorty's still popping off because no one can get up there to contest him unless they want to overextend and push past their level of support by hitting that skybox. He's got Hisoka up there to protect him on the Reaper. Hisoka's got a blossom, and I think we're going to see it now. Oh my god, right on top the Immortality Field, never enough to save you from that much damage coming in from the sky. Snorty finds another two, maybe 3k with that ultimate, and I am just wondering how many barrage kills he might have in this entire match so far. He's only been on it for a map, and then a half of Nepal, and on half of Nepal, he had one ultimate, I got five kills before. He's getting such incredible value out of these things. I mean, series-wise, I think we're definitely a 10 so far, at least. Um, but I mean, as we push it here, that, that might be the best case scenario for, for Montclair. They got a lot of ultimates out of the way for Hawking College there. However, Snorty continues to get picks, already 30% toward that barrage, but he falls quickly. Oh, Grapasaurus did a good job oh. holding up the shield, blocking the shatter, but as he was trying to lay his down, he was bursted so quickly, sitting at about 300 hit points, yeah. and it was removed in the blink of an eye. The or blink of an eye. the press of a Q button. <laughs> The Qs are alive and well for Hawking here. They don't have too many ults to work with. Jake does have the Valk online. That may suffice as a good enough damage boost to really feed the rest of Hawking the ultimates that they're going to need, especially, and I mean, no surprise here, if Snorty can continue forcing out Resurrects as soon as the fight breaks out. Robot Wizard's almost online with another Earth Shatter. I know he's sitting at around 66%, but when we're talking about how quickly this man is building those Shatters, he's really right around the corner from another ultimate. And I don't believe Mako is going to expect it, but they're looking to just get the knockout punch on the Robot. He falls awfully low before catching that uh, nade from his friendly Ana Humble to keep him alive with that burst of healing, but still the Reinhardt's just brawling around this corner. No one really thrown any major punches. The slam does come through on the Jujashi, and they weren't expecting it. Not able to block it, but eventually Robot Wizard does go down, but the job has been done. The Graviton Surge locked up everyone that was lingering, and although the kills are coming through late from Montclair, I think the trade war is going to be in the favor of Hawking in the long run. It definitely is. In fact, in my opinion, Montclair needs to back up briefly here as it is last fight territory. Needs to try to get their team back. Instead, they opt to stay on payload. Snorty finds one with the barrage. Make it three there in total as he is a menace in the skies. Robot Wizard comes back in from spawn and greets Grape of Source with that right shoulder against the wall. Snorty owns the kill feed as always. And Hawking College owns Numbani as they take the series 2-0. Yeah, they jumped out to a pretty quick victory in this one, but we are going to be playing that third map. Snorty getting another play of the game here on our second map, and to no one's surprise, I don't believe. I mean, this is... This is exactly what I was what, talking about. This is what his POV looked like all game, too. He's just going into the back line, nobody's looking at him, lands the directs, and he's always got his ultimate, it seems like. 
And when he pops that, no one's looking at him except for that one time Jay Joshi popped him out of that ultimate with that Sigma Rock. That was the only time they've been able to cancel that. It, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. And that's what good communication brings you. That doesn't happen in a solo queue game. You don't take down the hit scan, then immediately whip a 180 to find three. That comes from your team calling exactly where that front line is and how much they can enable you throughout this ultimate to sustain and keep you up, especially after you take down that hit scan. Well played there from the whole side of Hawking College in that play of the game. At least in my opinion, I'm assuming that's a ton of communication on their end. I'm excited to see them continue that on Dorado, where once again, that high ground is going to ring true on what team can really survive when it comes to defense and how they push on attack and right now there's no high no high ground that snorty's not contesting and frankly owning at this point yeah he is on the hero that is going to claim every high ground unless they do something about him and i think it might be the time to go to the diva your team might not have a diva player but at this point you're learning snorty is owning the skies and you got to do a little bit more to take him out of it you got to put up some aa and get him off off the uh, the high ground because, like you were saying, this map it runs rampant with him. And if Snorty's going to be ruling the skies, you can't take good positioning around the map if he's going to be doing that much damage from above. But Montclair choosing to attack first, so I lied. Maybe they might have some strategy up their sleeve, and they're looking to fool a defense first, putting Hawking on the back foot. And if they can do it, if they can push the payload far and get in Hawking's head a little bit, they could end up winning Dorado. That's a good point. So going forward, you will see Montclair on the red side, Hawking on the blue now. They choose to attack first for the side of Montclair. You'll see Hawking defending Dorado. And I, I mean, we can't harp on it enough. I, I want to take the time to really, once again, advocate for these both for both of these supports to the unsung heroes of so many teams here in the NACC. Snorty couldn't do enough without that Ana, without Jake on that Mercy there, really, really enabling him. But I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. What can Montclair do as far as dealing with Snorty? Do we commit a D.Va even if there isn't a D.Va player? Do we just go forward and try and learn, try and have some sort of answer for it? I think we might have to at this point, but you also have to think in your head, I'm halfway through. I'm I'm week five of NECC right now. Is my map differential looking good enough to where I can consider this a potential throwaway game, a glorified scrim as you and I have liked to call it a few times? Mm -hmm. Can we experiment a little bit or do we have to just rely on what we've known to work and assume that it's going to get the job done even if we've been faced with adversity and it's in its highest regard on the last two maps yeah and far changes the game too so much it it's not like yeah. when she's in you're you're going through your scrim blocks in the week and i'm sure most teams aren't out there playing far so you're preparing for something that isn't the reality when you come up to game day and snorty's taking to the skies with the bird the rocket bird and doing the amount of damage that he is so i think this could be one of those glorified scrims. If they didn't learn what they needed to to counter far going into this game in preparation, now is their chance to learn so they don't have to face this kind of fate going forward in the next couple of weeks. And this is one thing I love to do when I coach teams as well, is I always try and get with the opposing team, especially if I'm close enough with them and we do scrims often, and I ask them to run double bird against us, right? I ask them to run a far because it really does, as you hit on so well there, it changes the game of Overwatch. You know, it's not, it's no longer that standard brawl. It's not even a standard dive. It's dealing with the complications of looking in the sky and looking at that front line, like you said on Nepal, and that's what makes it difficult for the DPS, is it not only becomes this battle of mechanical skill on who can deal with Afara, it becomes this constant question that you have to make very decisively and quickly on what is the right call. Am I looking at Farah now? Am I helping with the front line? And forcing a DPS who's not who, who aren't known for having to make those kind of complicated decisions like tanks and supports do when it comes to making space, it forces them into that situation where they might not thrive as well. And it looks like Montclair are going to have to continue to do that as no surprise here. You see Snorty on the Fara. On the Fara to start out on defense to this Dorado map. We've talked about the high grounds, but also it's got a massively tall skybox, especially when we go into the third point. When all of the cover goes away, the skybox on third point is actually insanely tall, so it remains a good point for Fara, but she can be poking around this bell tower doing so much work and being so hard to hit. And I really don't know if boss face on the Hanzo is able to land an arrow from that far away. And Snorty can just play in such a forgiving style where he's still How so productive. 
I, I agree. However, I think this is a much better Echo map than it will ever be a Fara map because these natural structures and the buildings. Well, okay. Oh, well, I, why oh, don't you talk a little bit? Because I just curse Jitter every time I mention him. So. One point to Yellow Crab, <laughs> but also I lose one because Boss Face has proven me wrong right away. Before he does find his way back to spawn, he ends up with a 2k for the attacking side. Finds Boss those Boss long range arrows. Yeah, they might be able to push through this choke, but Robot Wizard is just trying to back them down, bursting through that first choke and keeping it locked in for Hawking. Snorty almost in trouble there as he goes up without Jake on that Mercy. Almost falls to Jitter there, however, gets sustained, backs down, and continues to hold these natural structures and back down. Now he's hovering right above the fountain. I want to see Jitter move in. Yeah, I want to see him move in left side and make space for his tanks, but he's got to win the duel here before anything opens up. I think the rest of Montclair have to play slow, and they legitimately have to rely on one of the DPS getting a pick just like that one onto Hisoka. That's a great pick on Hisoka, but Snorty sitting at 85% to Barrage. He's racing Jitter to the ultimate, whichever DPS can get it first or win this duel that they've been engaged in for so many seconds now is going to be the difference maker in this next couple of fights. But Robot Wizard still just saying that he's got the front line locked down while Snorty's up in the skies doing his thing. He is not budging one inch under this bridge. The side of Hawking say enough is enough and on defense they decide to commit the nano and just walk forward with Robot Wizard on that Reinhardt and they find success as like you mentioned Jitter and Snorty were just having at it with their mercies up in the air brawling it out. The defense had had enough of it and chose to walk forward and found success in doing so. However both sides with a ton of ultimates online. We've got the mind games ready for the shatter v shatter. We've got both DPS both birds excuse me with the ultimates and and here comes the dragons mixed with the amplification matrix. Almost catches Robot Wizard unawares and in by that bridge. The slam does land. He's not able to put up the shield in time. Grapasaurus stepping forward into a 2k side and getting the headshot kill to take down Snorty. The Mercy getting involved in the kill feed on the most important member of Hawking so far in this match. And the payload moves forward to the finish line of the first point. Grapasaurus commits the Shatter, and then Snorty decides to go for the Barrage to try and keep his team alive as they're unconscious on the ground briefly. However, it doesn't work out. Snorty falls, and now he's down this Barrage, when I think it could have been used immediately on this corner just to stop that attacking side from holding and solidifying their stake at this first corner to really give his... Uh, really take his spot on this high ground, but instead he gets bubbled right there and Jitter and Snorty are back at it again in the air. But Boss, Boss Face just keeps finding is... these picks. Ooh, that was long range indeed. The headshot over the shield finds the window. Robot Wizard closing in with the shatter now. He's already removed the main tank. He's got to lay this one down in any moment. He's just got to line up those squishies. Maybe has the restraint to lay off of it as his team was able to clean up those kills without the use of that shatter. Three minutes left we, on the clock, Unicorn. Yeah, absolutely. And we watched Jinx meme go from about 26 to 48% there with that nano boost. That's going to help in that ult economy to build that Graviton Surge. As Joshi, I don't believe, has used his first grab yet. And now Jinx about 40% away from his second. That's definitely going to work out in the favor of the defense here as long as they can keep that ult economy cruising on their side and speaking of ults they do have a grab dragons coming up for the side of montclair man i'll tell boss face continues to open up two do it again boss face show it off let's see it jitter able to put and jitter finds snorty snorty there's the dragon coming through this man's not done yet in the kill feed that's going to be another two kills and Cyan and everyone else just drifting up trying to take the better positioning as that fight was easily won by montclair this is a DPS carry right now. Montclair has Jitter and Boss Face, and that is the only thing keeping them alive right now. Obviously supported by their uh, Cyan and Wishmaker here on the BAP and the Mercy, but they are the only things keeping Montclair in this as the tank line just seems to be having trouble dealing with the side of Hawking College, but Jitter and Boss Face are coming back, breathing some life into the side of Montclair, and they need it right now, but there's a huge shatter. A huge shatter and the echo copy onto the Reinhardt and they both go in. Jitter lands down his second slam. And that one's going to be more than enough to clean up the last man standing, which is Snorty. Three minutes left going into this third point. This is exactly what Montclair needed. This is what we talked about at the start. If they can get this third point with a decent time, maybe they get into the heads of Hawking. 
definitely seems like a different team here on Dorado so far. I did so much to mention the ult economy for the side of Jinx and friends on Hawking. However, uses that Graviton Surge not very well in my opinion as it looks like the fight had already been lost and now joshi ahead in the grab war as we move into third point dorado and now humboldt's helping out of the dps front they should have a resurrect to get one of those picks back in the fight but it might not be enough as it's a four versus six making us six versus three and the reinhardt stuck in a trap i mean this one is all said and done they're just gonna have to go next year with two minutes left on the clock and this is where it gets difficult for the attacking side. Once you lose, uh, once you lose that first fight here in point three, you can see from Hisoka, from the angles that Snorty's going to take on this Junkrat, so difficult to push in here on the attacking side, especially when you have all the spam from a soldier Junkrat, no matter what avenue you take. I think they need to opt for the high ground, go right side, and you can see them starting to transition that way now. If the side of Hawking isn't going to have a way to get up there. However, all roads lead back to the payload and as long as Hawking can continue to contest that and continue to get picks like that they're gonna have a good time on defense the attackers finally pushing up toward the high ground now and they're able to pick off Hisoka another headshot landing from boss base who's just shooting bullseyes out of this bow so far on this Dorado map the payload is moving with two members on it the dragon strike comes through jitter again focusing beaming down Jake just on the mercy the nano does get slapped onto robot wizard who starts to step forward more aggressively but he's got nothing to swing on and so much potential damage he's looking to do with that hammer now finally able to get some swings going onto just the front line of montclair lands the slam jay joshi goes down the visor and the rip tire pop all the ultimates it seems like are committed and there's still a minute left on the clock is it the right call it certainly stopped the cart it has a minute left on the clock. Jake with the only check mark on the Hawking College side. I want to see an early Valk here with a damage boost. Rely on Humble to keep your team up and just try and build as many ults as you can here as Grav is online now. But the Grav Dragon's not ready for Montclair, but they do have some other ultimates in the way. They have a, a potential Fire Strike Amplification Matrix combo. The Shatter's there. Cyan with a Valk of their own and Jitter's right there on a duplicate yoke. And you gotta remember too, Jitter can copy the Zarya and they can wait for the Hanzo to charge up the Dragon exactly. Strike. They might have a couple of Graviton Surges. Snorty gets scorched by a Fire Strike up top. The visor is popped. Everyone is stuck in this Graviton Surge. Both of them coming through. Huge anti. anti nade lands. That is massive, but it's going to be that kills from Montclair that end up being the difference maker. The slam lands onto everyone it needs to, and now they've just got to back down Humboldt into the spawn. The cart moving, the finish line close, and we're in overtime. The biggest problem with that, though, is during that attack, they needed three on the payload because now Hawking's going to have a chance to defend, especially when Jake comes back on the Mora. Taking a while to die, even with no fade. That's going to give Robot Wizard and Jinx time to get back on their tanks. The spinner is here. He's ready oh, as, as he can be. The Nano comes out. He's trying to spin on the payload for as long as he can. The Dragons are there. They're aimed at spawn. They do find Jinx out of mech. However, defense trying to rally back here, and Wrecking Ball's not dying, Yoke. They did such a good job trying to rally back, but it was boss face just landing headshot after headshot. He finds Snorty right on his way out of the spawn. And if Snorty didn't go down right there, he was going to get a massive nano boost coming through from Humboldt, but it ended up being slapped onto the Wrecking Ball, who couldn't quite do enough damage to remove members of Montclair from this cart. And they're still not off it yet, and they're coming up on more and more ultimate. Cyan already popping that Valkyrie again. Grapesaurus has the slam. He lays it down, but everyone's already taken care of. Look at the kill face. Boss face has been a star on Dorado, an unsung hero for this Montclair team showing up when it matters most. Snorty doing his best to stay alive here. However, it looks like it's just a last ditch, last ditch effort. Having trouble killing him as well. However, Jinx will not make it back on this Winston. And uh, Jitter, killing it on Echo. Snorty, killing it on Farah. I'm here for boss face right now. I am a boss face stand at this point. After I've seen Dorado yelp, he's popping off right now. Headshot every single fight to open it up some dps is down i mean jake just lives with his resurrect on cooldown because he is always always resing somebody who's been picked off by boss yeah boss is just getting so much value on the honda pick it's really working for him and it's so tough to do when snorty's been on that farah you've got to be concerned with him doing just as much or even more work up in the skies and it's not always easy to look up at him but boss face is looking at everyone else and he's not missing 
He's not. And I mean, you've got to assume that there's some conversation going on from Robot just like, hey, why do I have a shield if we're not standing behind it? How does this keep happening? But Bossface keeps threading the needle with these picks and finding them. Even a couple times the bird in the sky with the headshots there before Snorty switched. But we won't see Snorty switch just yet as he's back on the Fara here for attack. Hasoka opts for the soldier. Not a huge fan of the soldier point A. Not a lot of high ground contests you can get to unless you want to sprint all the way around loses some time uh where poke is very vital as you move into these corners of the initial streets phase of point a but the roll with the soldier all the same rely on snorty to do a lot of that work while soldier finds some sort of location where he can really pop up and get the advantage he needs with that spam but we'll have to see what else they opt for as Honestly, the comps haven't really changed here from Hawking. They continue to roll same thing after same thing because it works. And uh, boss face is back on this Hanzo. I'm all for it. I want to see a lot more of that. And this comp from Hawking works because it seems like they've got a very specific plan with it every time. Snorty rolled out of the spawn so far along the coast side of this map, all the way to the right, not in harm's way one bit, had the mercy pocket the entire time, and now he's just setting up his angle around this bell tower that he wants to be off of so badly. Able to take down Vishmaker with two direct rockets, no problem at all. He's got the damage boost still locked into him. And now, I mean, the skies are all his. J. Joshi goes down, can't withstand the burst from those rockets, and it's just a snorty show. Unicorn, I mean, how many times have we said it so far? I mean, he continues to pop off here, and I, I love the play from him. Not only is he popping off, but he's making smart plays, and I love the way that Hawking plays around him here. As they close in on point A and find these last picks, well, yeah, Snorty continued to kill it. I, I almost thought with the sleep there that it was going to turn around. However, the way that Hawking is playing around Snorty is they're playing slow through the initial choke. They wait for a pick, then they wait for chip damage onto the front line, and then Robot and Jinx really move in and take advantage of that chip damage that Humboldt is having trouble healing up. Um, or excuse me, not Humboldt, that uh, Sign and Wishmaker are having trouble healing up. And through that process, like that's how they're able to really win that frontline war, is through the backline damage that Snorty's getting in, and then he transitions to that tank line. It's very smart transitions that he'll find, I think, over and over again in Streets phase, but not for a couple seconds. He gets picked by Jitter. Diva Bomb comes up with a kill on the Cyan and takes down the Immortality Field. That should buy a little bit of wiggle room here for Snorty to move back forward after getting resurrected back into this fight, but Grape is just holding down this corner. He's not really afraid. The Dragon Strike comes through to back off the front line. That was encroaching from Hawking, and Humboldt does go down to that Dragon Strike very late in that ultimate, I would say. Yeah, Jitter also takes the duplicate there and doesn't find the barrage when he takes Snorty's far and that might spell trouble here as the duplicate is practically wasted. It does make a little bit of space, however, they're on the back foot as Robot Wizard wants to brawl forward. He's in the middle of an amplification mission, but the Shatter finds four. And only one of them had a barrage to combo with it. Snorty not able to live through that entire ultimate animation, eventually taken down by Jitter, but the Resurrect again coming back through onto him. And that barrage just finds triple kill after triple kill. It seems like it's endless. I mean, I wish we had some stats here where we can look. I, I mean, it's got to be, we're, we're what, at 20 barrage kills now? It's got to be close, right? Yeah, he is up there. He's definitely well into double digits, probably on his way to two dozen. Jinx just falling off the map. If you're curious about that one, that is to get the mech back. I know that can get some strange looks from chat sometimes. Just why did that player walk straight off the side of the map after the fight ended? But that is the mindset there. I think it definitely saves time here on uh, on point three as you get closed in and the diva really has to peek these small chokes or the baby diva has to peek the small chokes just to try and get that mech back. Definitely smarter to get the switch here. Gets the DM back for your team. And speaking of back for your team, Robot Wizard's here and he's nice and blue trying to move forward. The nano boost not enough to keep him alive. Tons of damage coming through. And Vishmaker able to take him down. Diva, d mech Jinx going down to Jitter's focusing beam. The tactical visor coming in, what might be considered late if it's coming up empty, but if nothing else, it does get that slime out from Grapasaurus, and there is value in that with four minutes left on the clock. Yeah, I mean, we popped the visor at the end, and in response, not only did Jitter, uh, did Jitter use the duplicate on the far, but like you mentioned, Grapasaurus also commits the shatter, so I think all in all, it goes in the favor of uh, of Hawking there, which was surprising because the visor looked like a bad play. However, it gets response with ults. 
Yeah, it's going to leave Montclair State rather empty-handed. All they've got is Jay Joshi's Graviton Surge. Jitter getting that crucial kill again help. onto Hisoka, making it so he's not able to claim those high grounds. Jinx Meme is into the back line now, just battling down Boss and Vishmaker. Jitter falls to Snorty and Unicorn, I've got to say, Snorty is being hyper-aggressive right now. The Diva Bomb flies in, and Snorty's going to claim some space with it as well, just putting rocket after rocket into the back of these tanks. And rocket after rocket continues the barrage unleashed on the Vishmaker and Jay Joshi. He falls again to Cyan, who honestly has done as good a job at killing Snorty this game as anyone playing Mercy. <laughs> I mean, it, it's an everyman job here for the side of Montclair just to try and deal with Sorny. Did you see that last fight, Yelk? I mean, Sorny lived inside of swing range oh from, the, uh, from the enemy, Reinhardt. However, the sleep comes out, the Nano's there, excuse me, the Anti's there. Hosoka ends up taking out Grapasaurus in a swing. bad shatter from Robot Wizard is going to wrap up this defense for the side of Montclair. And Mo you got to assume Hawk here just going to walk it in here with about three minutes on the clock. A great response from Hawking. Montclair did everything they could on the attack to try and get into their heads, but Hawking staying ever consistent in this match, taking three points with time on the clock, and they never swapped off the far. Never had to. It's still going to work. I would be absolutely blown away, shocked if they don't run it on defense and attack to finish out this match. I mean, what's funny is that you and I had spoke about it in the uh, in as we jumped into Dorado about how third point had a pretty big skybox, but with where <laughs> we didn't see Snorty play anywhere near that no. skybox. He lived inside of the Reinhardt and the Diva of Grapasaurus and uh, and Joshi there. It, once he knew that the hit scans were dead, once Baptiste had to back down away from his Soka on that soldier, uh, he just lived inside of the tanks, tried to boop them into the Diva Bomb. I like that play, but instead, when they didn't die to it, just finishes it off with the barrage all over them and destroys the uh, it destroys the front line as they try and come back and contest. And then we saw that fat sleep combined with the Ansi, and it was over there for Montclair. And it was over there for Montclair. And since Hawking was the team with the better time bank again they're going to be defending so even though they had the attacking side to start this one and Montclair chose uh to you know give them the defenders advantage they're going to find themselves here again in overtime after all of this Jitter's still on the echo I think that's been his best answer to Snorty and boss face has absolutely no reason to switch off this Hanzo I think this is the comp that gives Montclair the best chance at staying in this map I think they found well well every time we talk about Jitter I said time. the best chance I said the best chance I think I think what comes out here is I think they've got everything right. I uh, once again we've harped on it. I just think if Joshi was on the Diva, we would still see a better answer for it. I think we'd still see the right call on how to really deal with Snorty on this Farah here, as he has the ability to defend uh, to defend here and really hold around these corners. And it proves to be so difficult for Jitter as once again Snorty finds these picks, but Jitter cleans it up and he's going to try and deny the res at this point. The rest should be there, but Jake doing a great job to evade the damage from that echo over the top. Double. Boss face, Storm arrowing down Jinx while the healers are distracted in the back line. Hisoka countering with a kill on the Jay Joshi as Robot Wizard falls as well. The tanks getting removed one after another in this one, but still holding the statue is this Hawking team not looking to give any ground. Snorty from over top again takes down both the supports. Make it three. Boss face falls as well. That should be every threat taken out. And Snorty's now got that nano boost. He's got the barrage and he ends the round right here. I mean, if I'm Snorty, the biggest problem with that fight is that Hisoka stole my 6k. That's the only problem <laughs> with that last fight. Because otherwise, it was him in the kill feed and nobody else. I, I wish I could hear the Discord right now of Hawking College. It's got to be the Snorty chant as they're going to move into week six here without a problem. And if I'm one of the other colleges watching Hawking right now, and if I'm going against them in the next few weeks, I am shaking in my boots. Yelk. This far is a problem and somebody somewhere down the line has got to address this and try and put Snorty in his place because it doesn't. At least he's playing like no one has ever before. Yeah, he's bringing far to another level for this Emergence Division game, and this is a team that comes in at 3-1. and one. They've only got one loss so far, which was to Arcadia, and currently they are, you know, to be fair, battering Montclair. I mean, they've put up impressive time banks. The first map was incredibly quick. Snorty has not really had to change his hero except one time, and when he was on the Junkrat, he was doing exceptionally well too, so... This team is not the one looking for answers. They came into this game with a plan. They've executed it so perfectly that they've not had to swap up anything to execute. 
And going forward into this last overtime round here for this match, they're going to stick with the tried and true. Hisoka's back onto the Reaper, but Snorty will be taken to the skies yet again. And I do like the answers we're seeing. Look at this. I know. This, this is Sinbad. a cheeky hold. A cheeky hold. But in my opinion, far is one of the best answers for this kind of comp. A Sim Bastion, you just get far, you just get far to hold a corner and look at how, how much all the damage she's gonna do from the side here. Gonna force the shield to turn. That's gonna give the uh, attacking team the time to push and the room to push. Oh my goodness. Wow. Three in the feed for Snorty as Hisoka comes up with the first one on the boss base. And while that hold was looking kind of impressive just because it was able to last even 10 seconds and they were able to take down the tanks in the first fight, you can't stay there forever. Snorty can just kick out way far away and use Far's infinite range to just rain in rockets on top of that Bastion and not able to stay there forever. But now they're on the different DPS heroes that can tank better angles on this bridge choke. I mean, let's put it in perspective. There was not a single tank alive for Hawking College when Snorty just got four kills there. So uh, I'm not even sure if uh, Robot and Jinx need to stay connected to the match at this point. Lands the direct on the boss face. No damage boost needed to get the kill. Confirmed. Hisoka steps up right into Grapasaurus, taking down the Reinhardt. Snorty is rolling deep. He's almost got the barrage at 95. 96 will even need it. I think everyone's going to be finished off by the time he's able to let it rip and Jitter is the last one floating on the point. And the Echo finally shotgunned down by Hisoka. Four meters left to go for this payload to be pushed, and that is going to be a 3-0 for Hawking College once they've cleaned up this tracer. His Hisoka reminds us that he's not the only, that Snorty isn't the only one in the kill feed, cleans up the last three there, including the tracer. Hawking College not only take the series, but take a clean 3-0, and we can make jokes all we want that it's on the back of Snorty, but a fantastic group effort as Snorty gets back to back to back. Play of the games here in week five of the NECC, and look at this, the anti's oh there, God. a fat anti, lines up the rockets perfectly right above the Reinhardt shield of Grapasaurus, and able to clean up, and I love this far a play. Not only is it mechanically inclined, very proficient far a play, but it's intelligent far a play too. Not just coming out of spawn and trying to jump up and find a weird boop. You go around, you find that natural structure, you play it slowly and intelligently with what could have been a very cheeky and very successful hold from Montclair College. But Snorty, I, I mean, we can talk about MVP. Is there a discussion that you want to have that's different than Snorty? Because I'll, I'll hear it right no, now. Man. However, no, not I think in this one. Yeah. So Snorty, yeah. Week 5, NECC, the Emergence Division, Hawking College versus Montclair. You see Hawking College come out with a 3-0. You see Snorty come out of the series as your MVP, a very well-deserved MVP. If I'm Chad, I'm blowing up with a Snorty chant right now. If I'm Hawking College... I, I almost said drinks are on me. Most of them probably not old enough for that, but Capri Suns Shirley on Temple's me tonight. Temple's on this guy. All right. Yep. <laughs> Capri Suns, Shirley Temple's chocolate milk on me tonight. Everyone for, for everyone for Snorty. Well-deserved. Anything else, Yelk? Are we getting interviews, Caleb? Ooh. Who do you want to talk to? Man, if it was up to me, I'd talk to Snorty, but... If Caleb's I mean, got someone, then Caleb's got someone. Yeah. Snorty? Nice. Ooh. I think it's up to us. We get to, we get to we ask get him what it was like to just have dinner served to him three maps in a row. Yeah, and um, I'm hoping he'll have some good answers. And I, I want to try and dig deep into the into the mindset of running Faro so consistently and, and, and how his team plans on it. But honestly, it could just be a meme fest because we saw all the action in the gameplay. That might have answered all of our questions right there. We could VOD review and find any answer to an interview we wanted to after that gameplay. I am interested to ask them how they decide when to move in because you were saying that they're playing with their brain a lot. They're spamming from far away, playing very mm -hmm. safe. And at some point, they make the decision to close the distance and get right on top of the tank line like we saw in third point Dorado where they are point blank just bouncing on top of the heads of Montclair College tanks and, you know, coming out on top. One, yeah, not it, missing rockets. Sorry to cut you off. Not missing rockets because he's point blank. But two, just he's he's playing with his brain, like you said, but it looks so brain dead to see him just <laughs> dancing on top of him like that. And it's so successful. 
Yeah, and I, I want to assume that it's not, you know, the comms aren't dead, right? It's not just a solo yeah. queue game. It, it, yeah, no one's just not saying anything. I think it really takes that group effort from the rest of the team to say, hey, BAP drop down, you know, you're free to go. I, I'd assume it's not that in depth, but it's it's got to be a group effort knowing exactly when you can go in as that Fara and... We don't have to speculate about it any longer because we've got Snorty in the booth, booth with us right now. What's going on, man? Hey, how's it going? I'm doing well. First of all, congratulations on a clean 3-0. And uh, not only a clean 3-0, but the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back play of the games there. You're killing it tonight, man. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. No problem. Yoke, take it away, man. Oh, yeah, Snorty. I mean, you got pretty much the only kind of hat trick you can get in Overwatch with the three play of the game. So that was pretty awesome to see. But... You didn't have to switch from the far hardly at all. They had two hit scan at one point. If two hit scan isn't the answer, how does a team come out and put a stop to a far like you? Not to give away all your answers, but if you were on the other team getting run by a far, what would you do? So, so you mean in this situation, yeah? So yeah, in a situation like this. Their their uh, mercy pocketed echo was actually a really really good answer to me. I don't know if it seemed like it, but they were giving me way more trouble than you you probably could have seen because they weren't killing me per se but she was just really relentless on me mm -hmm. so if you would uh ever go back to the demo you would see that she was like almost exclusively on me and uh echo damage boost it does a lot of damage um she did about half my health and two shots across the map with damage boost so i was actually really scared of her so you could see me playing really far back against that so that's the answer for if you're getting countered as farah but you don't want to swap farah um, just play back, play natural cover, because Farah's uh, spam potential is uh, really overlooked. Yeah, and I wanted to ask you about that too. Unicorn and I were talking about how you're clearly playing with your head, you're adapting your play style as the game progresses, and what does it take for you to make the decision to go from spamming from very far away, no one on the other team has died yet, and you would close the distance, you would have something click in your head where you're just like, now is the time where I can hover directly above the enemy tanks, and just shoot rockets point blank at them like when do you decide to just go absolutely ham and just be pretty much your team's main tank i mean you were in the front line ahead of your own main tank at some points in that map so the way we did that is that uh i i'm always trying to keep in mind like what's the problem for everybody and when you're playing far that's probably one of the most impactful characters to do that on so I recognized uh, what would be trouble for me. So in that case, it was mostly Echo. And I told my team, hey, if you kill the Echo, then I can go in deep. So they would prioritize the Echo whenever they could. And okay. another thing is that it's simply just a player amount of vantage. Gotcha. Unicorn, what do you, what do you have for this fantastic rocket bird? <laughs> So in a situation like we're talking about, Snorty, where it it, it sounds like from a strate strategic level, is most of your scrims filled with you running Farah and your team doing their best to enable you? Or was this just a crazy night for you? Are most of the comps centered around playing slowly until you find a pick or until you find the right chip damage onto the front line where someone like Robot Wizard or Jinx can brawl forward? Or is it really more dynamic and just kind of going with the flow? Where's the, where's the plan at? We are extremely dynamic. We try to adapt as hard as we can. We actually uh play Farah not that often but we just saw the opportunity for it and rolled with it um far is not even like my uh top five most played i just play a lot of, i just try to practice as many characters as i can because i want to be flexible for my team okay well, you could have fooled us here as you absolutely killed it on the bluebird in the sky. I, I do agree that the Echo was the right answer for you. Do you think a more aggressive D.Va combined with that damage boosted Echo really would have wrapped it up and forced a switch out of you sooner on Dorado? Um, it really depends on our tanks answer to that. I feel like I, I would most likely absolutely have to swap from that. But there is a chance that our tanks are able to adapt to that and punish that. But... Honestly, that team was pretty good, so I'd say they would probably would have had me like right where they want me with the D.Va. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, they definitely did their best in stopping you. However, once again, 3-0 for Hawking College. Congratulations, Snorty. Send our regards back to the rest of Hawking. Appreciate it, man. Any shout-outs you want to give before we close up this interview? 
Uh, yeah, shout outs to my boy CJ. He was one of our tanks tonight. And um, shout out to Nate, one of our healers. And uh, shout out to Jacob. I'm basically just shouting out the team, I'll be honest with you. Fair enough. <laughs> Gosh. Fair enough. Well, shout out to yeah. all of them, the rest of Hawking College. Once again, Snorty, congrats on the win, man. Looking forward to seeing you play here. And from what we saw tonight, looking forward to seeing you guys kill it in playoffs. A really, really good showing here from Hawking. Looking forward to it, man. All right. Have a good one. Yes, sir. You as well. And that was once again Snorty, the far that you saw dominate from Hawking College. Hawking moves forward. You you said they were 3-1 before, so they move on to 4-1 here. Week mm -hmm. 5 of the NACC, I've got to assume this is a team we don't see enough of here in playoffs. And honestly, maybe a semifinals or even finalist contender here. Yeah, they look awfully scary. And the thing is, is he just told us he doesn't like to run far that much. It's not one of right. his most played heroes. He's just doing that to practice being flexible or just, you know, adapt to a strategy his team wants to run. So we were talking about comfort picks before the game, and he's filling a role for his team in this one and being our star player of the match, getting the hat trick and play of the games. I mean, that is a player to look out for in this division. I'm excited going forward. I mean, this man just told us that uh, not only is he not very proficient on Farah, but he basically just said this was a scrim. Just said, oh, well, we saw an opportunity, so I figured I'd try it because I wanted to be, I wanted to practice synergizing with my team more. He comes into a, uh, I guess, a scrim, three O's, gets play of the game for all three maps and pops off on a hero he's not very proficient on. Well, Snorty, keep me out of your games for any hero you are proficient on. That's going to do it for me here as we move into another series. Yelk, you got anything for us? I do not. I mean, if I got to give you any advice, chat, hold on to your rip tires before they take down a mortality field so we can keep screaming about those big plays when you're not on Fara because that's about the only thing that I noticed different in this game when I wasn't talking about Fara. It was incredibly fun to cast with you again, Unicorn, and I hope in our next one we get just as good of a game and maybe even a little closer next time. But our next match so. our next match is going to be Johnson and Wales Yellow Team versus ETSU Eastern Tennessee State University JV coming up in another Challengers Division game. So hang tight. I'm going to be bringing you that one with Neely. Don't go anywhere. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. Wow. 